Welcome to iLecture Online. Today, a new topic in physics called nuclear physics. It's actually a really exciting part of physics. And we're going to start out with the basic concept of the mass of a proton, a neutron, and an electron. <clears throat> to get us started, I wrote down in the corner here the mass of those three particles in terms of atomic mass units. So you can see that for the mass of a proton and a neutron, it's approximately one atomic mass unit. And for an electron, it's, of course, far less than that because the mass of an electron is about 1, 2,000 the mass of either a proton or a neutron. Where do those units come from? Well, take a note of this. If we write the mass of an electron um, in terms of kilograms, you would get 9.10938 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms, uh, at least to five decimal places. And you can see that uh, 10 to the minus 31 is a very, very small number. So they wanted to come up with a new unit that is far more associated with the mass of a single atom, for example. And uh, so they came up with a unit called atomic mass units. And the definition of that is that an atomic mass unit, 1U, is equal to exactly 1 twelfth the mass of a carbon atom, of a carbon atom, a stable carbon atom with 12 nucleons in it meaning six protons and six neutrons. So that is the definition of an atomic mass unit. So in terms of that, what is the mass of a proton, a neutron, and an electron? Now, you would say, well, wait a minute. If a carbon nucleus has 12 total nuclear particles in it, so let's see here, a, 12, a carbon 12, it consists of six protons and six neutrons, and maybe I'll write the proton like this, six protons and six neutrons for a total of 12 particles. And if together they have a mass of 12 uh, atomic mass units, so that one atomic mass unit is exactly one twelfth of that, shouldn't the mass of a proton and the mass of a neutron be exactly one atomic mass unit? And the answer is no. It turns out it isn't. If you take six protons and six neutrons separately and add them together, you end up with more mass than when you put them together into a nucleus of a carbon atom. And so later on we'll explain why that is so. But at least at this point you could say it is so when you put protons and neutrons together, they somehow lose mass in, in, uh, for the reason of the, that the nucleus can then stay together. That's done through the nuclear strong force and there's some mass conversion into energy to keep the nucleus together. We'll get into that a little bit later. But now we just want to get the feel of what these units are. Okay. So how do I convert from atomic mass units to kilograms? Well, the way to do that is this. Where the atomic mass unit comes from is the following concept. <clears throat> what they did was they took a clump of carbon-14, or I shouldn't say 14, a, carbon of, uh, <clears throat> a clump of carbon-12, so this is carbon-12, and they put enough of together that the mass was exactly equal to 12 grams. And then they tried to figure out how many atoms were in that clump. So now the next question was, how many atoms? And when they counted them, they found out that the number of atoms, which now became Avogadro's number, was equal to 6.02214 times 10 to the 23. That's how many atoms were inside this clump and therefore, this clump had a mass of 12 grams. Of course, in kilograms, that would be 0.012 kilograms. And then by definition, they call that exactly equal to 12 atomic mass units. So they said if we have this many carbon atoms, we have a mass of 12 grams. If we have one carbon atom, the mass would be 12 atomic mass units. So we could say 4. Avogadro's number of carbon atoms, the mass is 12 grams. So for one carbon atom, and of course we're talking about carbon 12 here, for one carbon atom, the mass is equal to 12 atomic mass units. So now you can see the relationship between the two. If you have one carbon atom, the mass is 12 atomic mass units. If we have a whole no, slew of them, a big number of them, called Avogadro's number, the mass is 12 grams. So that's the relationship between the two. Now, it turns out that an Avogadro's number of anything, in this case carbon atoms, is the same as saying you have one mole of those atoms. 
So another way of saying it is the mass of one mole of carbon atoms is equal to 12 grams. That's the same, the same thing as saying the mass of Avogadro's number of carbon-12 atoms is equal to 12 grams, because the mole is the same as Avogadro's number. And if you want to write out numerically, you could say the, mo the mass of 6.02214 times 10 to the 23 carbon-12 atoms is equal to 12 grams. It's all the same thing. So a mole, Avogadro's number, or the actual number, 61022, 6102214 times 10 to the 23 carbon atoms have a mass of 12 grams. And therefore, by definition, the mass of one carbon atom is equal to 12 atomic mass units. So if you want to convert from grams to atomic mass units, you have to either multiply or divide by Avogadro's number. Okay, so now that we know that, Let's then figure out the relationship between the mass of a proton in, in atomic mass units and the mass of a proton in kilograms. So, how do we do that? Well, the mass of a single proton is equal to 1.007276 atomic mass units. And now we're going to convert that to grams. And so we could say grams up here and so and we could say Avogadro's number so actually I better write it like this so if we now take this and we divide it by 6.02214 times 10 to the 23 atoms per gram and thus becomes 1 over that this is equal to and now if we get a calculator so we have 1.007276 divided by our address number, 6.02214 e to the 23 equals, then we get 1.6726 times 10 to the minus 24 grams. And that would be per mole. Or actually, no, that would be per single atom, not per mole grams per atom, or per, in this case, uh, per proton. But that's in grams. If we now want to convert it to kilograms, we have to go multiply this times. Uh, one kilogram divided by 1,000 grams. And so we simply have to divide this by 1,000. That means it's 1.6726 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. So you can see then that if you want to convert from the mass in atomic mass units to the mass in kilograms, grams or kilograms, we have to use Avogadro's number to do that. And you could do the same for a neutron, you could say that same for an electron and so forth. So now you have the ability to go back and forth between the concept of mass in kilograms and the concept of mass in atomic mass units. It all came from the basic definition that one atomic mass unit was exactly one twelfth the mass of a carbon atom. And that's how you deal with the mass of particles in the nucleus.